Hello guys, it's Johnny time. Now, you probably know me of the one who educates you about DeFi and crypto and blockchain. And today I'm excited to educate you about something new, smart contract hacking and security. And today we're gonna learn everything about re-entrancy attack, one of the most destructive attacks on crypto and DeFi with millions of dollars lost. It all started in the DAO in 2017 when $150 million were lost, but it's also actively exploited attack these days that many DeFi protocols suffer from. If it's the Rari Capital on April 2022, where $80 million were stolen, or Revest Finance on March 22, when $11 million were stolen. So today, you're gonna learn everything about reentry attacks, how it works, what you can do with it. Now, I hope that you're gonna use it for good purposes. This is only, this video is for educational purposes only. And I hope you're gonna take this knowledge in order to become a white hat hacker that help, that help projects to protect their smart contracts rather than the ones who hack them and steal innocent people money. We will also in this tutorial simulate this attack ourselves and execute it with hardness and solidity so you can learn the best, the practical way how to exploit this kind of attack yourself and eventually we will finish up by learning how to secure our smart contracts and write secure code that is immune to re-entry attacks. So I'm super excited and without further ado, let's get started. All right, so what is re-entrancy attack? So exactly like the name says, re-entrancy means re-enter. It's a vulnerability in Solidity and smart contracts that lets you, an attacker, re-enter the same function before it finished its execution. And the best way to understand it is by example. That's why I created this drawing here for you. So imagine you have a smart contract that represents a bank. It lets users deposit and withdraw if from the smart contract and of course it's gonna save their balances in a storage variable in a mapping that maps between addresses to integers so if Bob deposited three ether the smart contract will know that now Bob's has three ether and later on when Bob comes and tries to withdraw the ether the smart contract will send him the ether back how the smart contract send him the ether back is basically sending the ether first and then he updates the balance of Bob, the message sender, to zero. So Bob can send multiple times one ether plus two plus four and then later on come and try to withdraw all so the smart contract know that during this time Bob deposited in total seven ether. So it's gonna send him the seven ether and change the balance of Bob from seven to zero quite simple right but something is wrong with this withdraw function now try to pause the video take a look at the function and let me know uh, in the comments below if you spotted what's wrong all right so the withdraw function the first thing that it does it sends the eater to the user that's where the problem relies the smart contract, the bank, it thinks that Bob is a normal account. But what if Bob is not a normal Ethereum account, but a smart contract itself, right? Because smart contract can also be a user that deposit it to the bank and then wants to withdraw it. And in smart contracts, there is something called fallback function. This function will be executed when the smart contract receives Ether automatically. And now you can connect the docs and understand that when the smart contract, the malicious smart contract, we can deploy a malicious smart contract that deposit, let's say, one ETH and then calls the withdraw function from the bank with one ETH, but when this line of code will be executed, when the bank will send the one ETH to the smart contract, it will trigger here in the malicious contract a fallback function okay so this fallback function we can then use it in order to call again the withdraw function and guess what happens 
now the banks it doesn't know that it already sent us the ETH because it didn't update yet the balance our balance because it sent the ETH first so it's basically endless loop that loop that let us the attackers to drain the ETH from the ether bank smart contracts so the withdrawal function will be called then he will send us the ETH that will trigger our malicious fallback function that will call again the withdrawal now he still thinks that we have one eater or seven eater or whatever and he sends it again and then again fall back and then again re-enter until the balance of the eater bank is zero and then okay you can update the balance to zero but instead of withdrawing one if we withdrawn I don't know, maybe 100 ETH, maybe thousands of ETH, depends how much ETH exists in the smart contract. So now that we understand the concept of re-entry uh, re attack, it's time to some in practice to make our hands dirty and read some Solidity code. So here is the implementation of the Ether Bank. It's an updated Solidity version Ether Bank. Here you can see the mapping of the balances that stores the mapping between address to its balance. This is the deposit ETH functions. Very straightforward. It's a payable function that receives a message value, which is ETH, and stores it in the balance storage variable now this is a problematic withdraw function as you can see it's a public function that any user can come and claim back and withdraw its balance now here we have a variable that represents the balance of the user and then we send the ETH okay we verify that the send was successful that the transfer was successful and then we update the balance now here relies the problem we send the ETH first and then we update the balance later that's where the problem starts now let's try to deploy the smart contracts in order to simulate it and create our own environment guys I wanted to share with you something super Super exciting and new. I've created a complete practical smart contract hacking course accumulating 12 years of my cybersecurity and blockchain experience. Without exaggerating, this is your holy grail all-in-one course which will instantly help you kickstart your career in smart contract hacking and security, making you the most demanded professional with insanely high salaries. Get exposed to tons of knowledge by signing up in the description below. By the way, guys, all the code that I'm going to show you over here is going to be in GitHub, in my public GitHub. So feel free to clone it, to play with it, to practice reentry attack. The link will be in the description below. Now, I'm using Hardet in order to simulate a local blockchain. It's basically going to simulate like Ethereum, but on my local host running a local simulated blockchain. And we can that way simulate all the attack. And in order to start the local blockchain, we're going to write npx hardhat node. And it will take several seconds and there you can see you have all the accounts of the local blockchain it's just a simulation a demo now i created some scripts that will help you deploy the smart contracts and make some activity in the network of like simulating users that deposit money to the bank so the first script will be deploy bank we're going to execute it right now that will deploy the bank smart contract let's run it npx hard hat run scripts deploy bank and network make sure you add the local host so it will deploy it locally to the node and as you can see the ether bank was deployed to this kind of address and if you go here to the node you see that the transaction was sub submitted and there was a contract deployment of ether bank very easy very straightforward now the next trip you want to run is the use bank that basically gonna simulate some activity of the bank it's gonna deposit some ETH from account zero then it deposit five ETH from account one 12 from account two so the bank will be realistic and users will deposit some ETH to it so we're gonna do the exact same thing but this time just change the script from deploy bank to use bank all right and you can see the script will write depositing 3 ETH, depositing uh, 5 ETH, etc and it will show that the now the bank has 20 ETH in the balance and this is the balance storage variable that's what the bank know that account 0 has 3 1 has 5 2 has 12 and 3 which is the attacker has zero. So in our simulation, the account tree will represent the attacker. And as you can see in the initial state, it has zero. You can anytime check out the status of the bank by running the script check, check bank. 
okay? And then you can see the balances again. Now it's time to write the smart contract that is gonna exploit the bank. All right, so before jumping into writing code, let's try to plan our attack. So we want to attack this Ether bank .sol smart contract. And in order to do so, we need to deploy our own smart contract. We'll call it attacker.sol, attackbank.sol, doesn't really matter. This smart contract will have two main functions. One will be execute, which will start execution of the attack. What it's supposed to do, it's supposed to deposit first one ETH to the, to the bank. So the bank will see that we have some balance and then right after it will call the withdraw function to ask to withdraw this one ETH. Now, once the withdraw function will be executed, it will send a smart contract bet back the ETH that will trigger the fallback function that will call again the withdraw and then trigger then fallback until we drain the smart contract completely. Even though we deposited one ETH, we will, we will be able to drain it to all the 20 ETH that deposited by other users. And now let's get started with the code. And this is the attackbank.sol file, okay? So it's a Solidity smart contract. We uh, de declare here the interface of the Ether bank, the original smart contract, the deposit and the withdraw function. So the attack bank smart contract will be able to interact with the Ether bank smart contract. And here we create a new contract called Ether bank. We, cr we set some, uh, variables, the Ether Bank smart contracts that we're going to attack and the owner, we want to know who is the owner who deployed this malicious smart contract. So okay, eventually, once all the logic will be done, all the execution will be done, we can send all the stolen ETH to the owner, to the attacker who deployed this smart contract. Now, this is the constructor. This is the function that will be executed when the smart contract will be deployed. When it will be deployed, we need to tell him uh, only what is the address of the, uh, the contract that we want to attack, in our case, the Ether Bank address. And as you can see here, we are setting the owner, the attacker, the one who deployed the smart contract, he will be the owner. And we save the Ether Bank smart contracts by the address that we got upon deployment. Now, this is the execute or attack fu smart, uh, function that we planned before. As you can see, it's external payable. And it's first gonna call the deposit ETH function okay with one ETH so we're gonna send from this malicious smart contract one ETH to the bank smart contract of course that will have to send with a transaction one ETH or load it up with one ETH in advance so it will have the ETH to send to the original bank smart contract and then right after we'll call the withdraw ETH so it will ask the bank to withdraw all the one ETH that we uh, deposited one line before. Now this is where the magic begins, the receive smart contract, this receive function. This is the fallback function. That's how we write fallback functions in Solidity. And here we check if the Ether bank balance is greater than one ETH, we're gonna call the withdraw ETH function again. So the bank is calling the withdraw function and will trigger this kind of function. And here we check did we already drain the bank or is there any ETH left? If there is any ETH left, we're gonna call the withdraw ETH again and withdraw another one ETH. Else, which means that we already got all the ETH from the bank smart contract, we're gonna simply send all the ether of this malicious contract to the owner, which is the attacker who deployed the smart contract. So it's quite simple around 40 lines of code, and this is how we can create a re-interesting attack. Super, super simple. Feel free to clone the code on GitHub. I'll put a link in the description. And now it's time to start and deploy and execute the attack. So first, we want to deploy the malicious smart contract. So we're gonna run the script, solution, and deploy attack contract. Okay, so we are de deploying first our malicious smart contract to the local blockchain. Let's click enter. And the malicious contract has been deployed to whatever. And here we can verify that the attack bank contract has been deployed. Now we want to run the script attack. This script is sim simply going to take the malicious smart contract that we just deployed and call the attack function that will execute all the logic that we just created in the smart contract. Let's do it. So we will run script attack on local host. And as you can see over here, after the attack, this is my balance before the attack, around 10,000 ETH. Bank balance before the attack, 
20 ETH and executing the attack, attack done, my balance after the attack is 10,018 ETH. So we were able to withdraw a lot of ETH from the bank and in order to verify that the attack was successful, we can run the script check bank again. And here we will see that the bank balance has have left only with one ether okay we went easy on him we left one ether for the bank so we were able to withdraw 19 ETH even though we just deposited one thanks to re-entrancy attack now you might ask oh my god this is so simple did you know that re-entrancy attack that millions of dollars were stolen just because of this kind of simple and stupid vulnerability Yes, you're right. But now let's try to understand how we can write better smart contracts that will not be vulnerable to re-entrancy attacks and people will not hack them. So the first important thing that you need to learn about a re-entrancy attack and in general about writing smart contracts is that always, but always update the state variables first, the storage variables of the smart contracts before sending ETH or calling a standard functions in other smart contracts. So by simply replacing the lines of the update and the transfer, okay, in the contract, in the withdraw function, we would avoid this kind of re attack because we would first update the balance of the user to zero and only after we would send the ETH, which will trigger the fallback function. So this is first way to protect against re entrancy attacks. Another way is to create some kind of mutex that will lock the smart contract. So we can create a variable, a Boolean variable that will be called locked. It's an internal variable and we create a modifier that's called re entrancy guard. So we will apply to this modifier before every function that might be vulnerable to re entrancy attack. And simply this modifier uh, just check if this locked mutex is true or false so we're gonna change it to true once we enter to the function so we'll do something like locked equals true and then the next time when we get into the smart contract again okay which will be protected by the re guard modifier, we will check again uh, this modifier will be executed and we will see that the locked is true so it will revert the transaction because this require will be executed so you have some kind of variable that knows all the time if someone is trying to re-enter to the same function over and over again so this is uh, the second way of protecting against re entrancy attack by using a re entrancy guard modifier. Now, if you want it even more simpler, in a more simple way, you don't have to implement this kind of function yourself. You can just use Open Zeppelin re entrancy guard smart contract. This is basically a, a contract that you can inherit from, and automatically it will let you use this kind of non re entrant modifier, which does the exact same thing. Exactly like re entrancy guard, just they implement it for you. You. So you can simply just import the re guard smart contract by open Zeppelin and then inherit uh, from this smart contract in your smart contract. And now this non re entrant modifier will be available and you can place it in every sensitive function that might be vulnerable to re entrancy attack. All right, so this is the re entrancy attack tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, make sure to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any more ideas about other videos that you want me to create, about DeFi, about crypto, about hacking, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next videos. Bye bye.